So what do you think? Is it time to answer the question? Yeah. I think it's time to answer the question. Hello Minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well today I'm going to attempt to answer the most asked question of all for this channel. This has been asked over and over and over again. And I've basically put people off. What color should I buy to start out with? You ask 10 different artists and you're going to get 10 different answers. And I'm not kidding. Another answer that you're going to get quite often is, here's what most artists use. Or here are colors you'll find on most artist palettes. And all of those are fine ways to go about choosing your first colors. I decided to do it differently. I decided to just show you what my favorites are and tell you why. I still think this is a very, very personal choice. And I know that several of you have said that you're new to watercolor, you've never painted before, and you just, you don't know what to do. It's not really a lot of mistakes you can make, but it does depend a lot on what you're planning on painting. Now recently, as many of you know, I had a Strathmore workshop. That's still up. That'll be up till the end of the year. It's over at the Strathmore Artist website, and you can sign up for free if you want to. But I introduced a palette on there. Now, when you're teaching a class or a workshop and you're teaching people to paint a specific thing, um, that's a little different. You can suggest a palette. You can suggest colors. But to suggest that one set of colors that beginners are going to need to choose or would be best for all beginners or would meet just about all of your painting needs is almost impossible. So here they are, the palette I used in the Strathmore workshop. Ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, Azo green, Indian yellow, Quinacridone red, and red iron oxide, sepia, and Payne's gray. I'm not going to show you every mixture they'll make because we would be here for two hours. I'll show you some of the more interesting and you will just get a real sense for how versatile this palette can be. All right, well, let's look at this first color, Prussian blue. I love Prussian blue. It's probably my favorite color. I mean, even in a personal non-art sense. Um, just a beautiful kind of a aqua blue. Not quite a turquoise. Just a lovely blue. And all the colors I choose here are really transparent. So that's a, a big plus for me anyway. A lot of people put sap green on their palette. I don't. I use azo green and we'll get to azo green specifically in a minute. But this combines real well with azo green. And you get this nice range of, of a blue green to a yellow green. As I was a really vibrant, transparent yellow green, right in there somewhere, you get the equivalent of, of like a sap green. And it's just really beautiful. Now, another color that's on my palette is quinacridone red. And again, we'll look at that in a bit. But um, when you combine that with Prussian blue, um, you get a kind of a nice grayed violet. Since there is some green in the Prussian blue, it it kind of grays out the uh, quinacridone red a little bit, but it's just, just a really pretty subtle violet and purple. I actually use violet a lot in landscape because it's great in shadows. It mixes well with browns. Two of many things you can do with Prussian blue move on to the next color in this palette. Love as a green. It's almost a green gold, but not quite. It's, it's greener than a green gold. Beautiful, rich, yellow green. I can combine this with a ton of colors. Uh, just about every color 
on this palette will combine and do something neat with. Let's look at a couple. Quinacridone red. Of course, red and green usually gray. Um, in this case, they're not exact complements because of the there's so much yellow. So it gets you a nice uh, kind of a red brown, almost a I don't know what you would call it. A raw sienna. See in there? Real interesting uh, range there of that azo green down to the red and sort of the brickish colors in between. Okay. And if I add Indian yellow to that azo green. You can yellow up that green even more. And Indian yellow is sort of... I uh, still have a little bit of something else in my breath. Indian yellow is real orangish. So... When combined with azo green, uh, you get very ochre-like colors in, in between. From, from right in here... Or the two mix. It's a very rich but transparent, almost ochre. It's a little more vibrant than ochre. You know, I took yellow ochre off my palette a long time ago. I don't really use it anymore. Just fine if you want to use it. A lot of artists do and love it. Um, I just always had trouble, and I've read other artists the same thing. I've always had trouble with ochre yellow ochre muddying up my colors now some of that may have been due to brand I don't know uh, M gram which I use and these are all M gram by the way um, has an, a, a nice semi-transparent ochre but I just don't use it I like these more vibrant versions just using Prussian blue and now as of green and look what I've, I've combined with them to get it's really really neat I don't put hooker screen I don't put sap green on my palette nothing wrong with that if you want to do it but I've just found that with as a green and colors like Prussian blue or ultramarine I can mix such a variety of greens that are really interesting and lively all right let's take a look at at Indian yellow since we were just using that just a really beautiful, rich, and I love M. Graham's Indian Yellow. Just a really beautiful, rich, orange yellow. Sort of a harvest gold, I guess you could call it. Not sure. Get it nice and vibrant here. Now, um, we'll get to connect on red in a minute, but... You can get a beautiful orange mixing the two. I mean, it just turns that quinacridone red into almost a fire engine red. Now I have other reds. I have pyrrole red, which I really love, which is more of an orange red. Um, but, you know, if I'm wanting to work with this basic limited palette, this works just fine and you get a nice... Uh, range of oh, hot you know orange yellow to orange to red color here's another neat combination with with uh, Indian yellow and that's ultramarine blue and my ultramarine blue I'm afraid there is a little dirty let me, let me try to fix that you know clean it off on my palette a little bit there that's better Indian yellow and ultramarine blue make a really nice olive color. It's slightly different from what you get with the Prussian blue and the azo green. Because uh, Indian yellow is a near complement to ultramarine blue, because it's very orange, there's a lot of graying going on in here. So you get a really interesting 
let me tint that out a little bit you get a really nice gray olive color I have used that color and used that color more than you would ever know um, I love beautiful neutrals especially if they're transparent and one of the reasons I like to keep my paint hues all transparent is less you know chance for muddying up the colors and I rarely have a problem with that macrodone red just a beautiful kind of a rose terrible at, at describing colors but sort of a rose there is a quinacridone rose too which is more magenta yet this is a very kind of a lipstick red i have this i don't use elizabeth and crimson much again nothing wrong with it as long as you cho choose the permanent variety um i have some but i've just come to like this better it's not as deep it's a cool red so it shifts towards the blue side on the red scale not as deep as Elizabeth and crimson and i think that gives it some flexibility when you add ultramarine blue you just get one of the most pr pretty violet purple colors i mean look at that gorgeous and right in there you have something that really closely approximates the lizard and crimson another color on my palette um, is red iron oxide and you combine that with quinacridone red and you just get a very beautiful ricky color i mean red iron oxide is already rusty but if you want to make it even more red terracotta like i don't know red clay like mixes really well with red iron oxide now red iron oxide is interesting its closest cousin is probably burnt sienna most people use burnt sienna this is the only brown i have on this limited palette when i'm using this limited palette i have them in the tubes i just i use red iron oxide a lot more Add a little sepia, and you get a great burnt umber, okay? Or a burnt umber-like color. It's not the same pigments, but it looks the same. Okay. Add a little bit of Payne's Gray to this, and you've got an umber, a raw umber-ish color. And some very neat ranges in between. So it's just fun to put these down, play with them, see what they do when you mix them. I love to see where what's in the range, you know, between the two. Add so Indian yellow to that. Get a nice raw sienna ish color if i add prussian blue i get a really interesting kind of a gray green gray green brown i use i combine those two a lot in landscape the prussian blue and the red iron oxide the ra range of browns you can get with red iron oxide is amazing I'm not showcasing these colors per se, but sepia and Payne's gray are great modifiers to all these co colors. Um, Payne's gray will, will cool gray most of these colors, or mute, and sepia will sort of warm gray any of these colors. You don't need a lot of colors to start. And my disclaimer is these are my favorite colors they don't have to be your favorite colors um you know choose similar colors if you like choose totally different colors and i do have a lot more colors so i don't just always use these eight but these eight are my favorites and as you can see they will do a ton well there you have it folks that's my favorite set of colors 
I have a lot more colors that I use, so you're not limited to eight, but I just wanted to show you what you can do with a set of eight. And it doesn't matter what kind of a basic set you start out with, really, it, if you have variety. What does matter is that you get those paints, put them down on paper and see what they'll do. Don't be satisfied with just having somebody tell you what they'll do. I mean, it's great to watch videos like mine and get suggestions, but until you get those paints out, and I don't mean in a painting situation where you're trying to paint something, I mean just play. You're not painting anything in particular. You're just getting out paper and you're letting the colors mingle, you're letting the colors splash and flow, and you're keeping track of what those various colors are doing when they mix with each other and you're making note. You know, hey, that color works great with this color. That's where you start to pick and use and understand your colors really well. Anyway, thanks so much, everyone, for watching. I hope if this was a help to you, you will give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and you mind your patrons. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your support means the world. You guys are the best. I've got a new sketchbook peaks being uploaded this week. Also, hang in there, be patient. The paint notes downloadable spreads are coming soon and probably later this week. So look for those. Until then, we'll see you next time.